this on, just go ahead to go ahead and get us started. So what I'm going to start with is just a water test just to kind of show you guys what it sounds like if you've not been brave enough to turn yours on or to try it. And this particular one, so the models will all vary a little bit. This is an eight quart Instant Pot. And I already, I ran the steam test earlier just to sort of see. Um, so I just have, in the eight quarts, you need slightly more liquid to get you started. So I have two cups of water in my liner, but if you want to try this and you're gonna do it at the same time with us, most of them that are the six quart ones, which is the common size, you only need one cup of water in there, okay? Now, I'm not sure how many people want to do this at the same time, but the eight quarts take a little bit longer to come to pressure. This takes a lot longer than my Chef IQ one to come up to pressure. I cooked some chicken stock in it yesterday and I was surprised at how long it took. But for this one, on your lid, let me not drip all over the place. On your lid. I know, my husband has not figured out yet how to fix the lid up and not drip everywhere. Not drip everywhere, yeah. So it depends on the model and it depends on the brand. But you should have something on there that says venting and something that says sealing. Now, for this wow. test, we are going to use the venting because we're going to set it on a steam function. And for steaming things, you want that steam to come out as opposed to building pressure. So you wanna put in a six quart or the standard size one, you wanna put one cup of water and turn your lid to venting. In the eight quarts, you wanna put two cups of water and turn your lid to venting. And then once you've got that on there, I do have to turn it a little bit because I can't see otherwise. We are gonna use the steam function. Now on this one, it is on that far side. Here we go, steam. And you wanna just set it for two minutes. It doesn't have to be long, and I'm not even gonna let it run the whole two minutes. I just wanna sort of have it come up to temperature and show you what it's gonna sound like. This thing sounds like a locomotive, a steam engine. It was huge. It was. I have to admit, even I was like, hmm, are you supposed to be doing that? Because it was a little loud, but it ran beautifully. It's just louder than the one that I use normally. All right, so, yes, Stephanie, I agree. She said she loves hers, looking to expand the usage. I'm hoping that I can show you guys some pretty cool stuff. This um, pot in pot technique that I'm going to show you counts for so many different things and I tell you I don't say things are a game changer very often but <laughs> this has been probably the biggest benefit um, when cooking in the Instant Pot over anything else because you're cooking inside of a dish inside the Instant Pot which means that your inner liner stays completely clean you don't have to worry about burn notices. Um, if you're like me and you're cooking a single serving at one time and you only need to cook, you know, the one small amount, then you don't have to worry about the fact that this needs two cups of liquid. That's okay. I can put two cups in the bottom, water-wise, just to build pressure, but then I can put, I can cook a quarter of a cup of rice at a time if I want to in the little pot. So this is going to be good. Okay, now, what? You got it on? Get it set up and get this steam thing going. It's gonna, it's gonna take a while to do its little heat up thing. So while that's heating, I wanted to talk to you about, you know, this, I tied them together with people being afraid of trying out the Instant Pot or, you know, just trying out something new. 
But I also wanted to talk to you while this is kind of doing its thing about the fears that you might have regarding your weight loss. And I, I mean, I know some of the really common ones that we see or we address on a pretty regular basis, but for you, what is something that you're either concerned about or somebody has said to you and you're like, oh, I guess, you know, maybe I should think about that. Or if you've lost weight, what was something that, you know, you were afraid of or you got to your goal and then you were like, hmm, I didn't really think about that part. You know, what is it that you either feared and overcame or you are concerned about on your journey? Everybody's quiet. <laughs> I can talk the whole time, but... So I'll, I'll give you some examples of something we hear a lot is loose skin. If I lose all this weight, especially if you have a reasonable amount of weight to lose, people are concerned whether they're going to have loose skin, how much loose skin, how long is it going to stay that way, is it ever going to bounce back, am I going to have to have you know, skin removal surgery, and it's going to vary from person to person in terms of how, how much elasticity your skin has normally, how much weight you're losing, how fast you lose it, um, whether you have had something... Why is Eliana Gina? Hmm? Oh, yep, yeah, fear of gaining the weight back, yeah. Wait till we get to February. All right, so this is going to start. This is going to start making some noise now. Just so you know. Okay. So has anybody lost a decent amount and had to deal with the sort of loose skin part? Is that something that you have had to address yet? Hernia that I got another abdominal hernia because I went in gung ho, you know, 
And, but anyway, when I lost the weight the last time, they had to repair another abdominal hernia. So I was blessed because, you know, when you have a, a tummy tuck or a... I don't want to hear this. Oh, somebody don't want to hear it. I don't... But anyway, um, I had skin removal surgery, and I was just going to say real quickly that um, I was blessed because the insurance decided that um, usually that's cosmetic, but um, it was medically necessary for me because they felt like it would be more beneficial on their behalf than to keep repairing abdominal hernias than to just go in and fix that abdominal wall, repair it, and in the process, I got the skin removed that was, you know, there. So that was a blessing. So I have had the skin removal um, surgery. And, and I have gained about 20 pounds back. So it's a little, you know, not quite as tight as it was then, but <laughs> still, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I will tell you, if you ever have that, I'm telling you, that, oh, it was, I mean, it was wonderful, I, you know, the outcome, but... They had it so tight. I was like scared to reach up. Like, you know, I was scared I was going to pull, pull something. Like, you know what I mean? It was just, but, um, yeah. Anyway, I'll be quiet. <laughs> no, you're fine. So Sandy was saying she's lost 70 pounds but didn't have a whole lot of loose skin. Um, and she worked out regularly when she lost the original and lost it slowly. And that does make a big difference. And Linda said she lost over 75 and does have hanging abdominal skin. Yeah, and that's that's the thing is, I think it depends on how we're built. A lot of times you can end up with um, that apron that where you lose the weight in the stomach and then you end up with a hanging apron and a lot of people really uncomfortable with that. And Rex, so talking about the Instant Pot, used the Instant Pot about a dozen times, all came out great. Yeah, I have to say, I, for as much as I put off buying them, now I wouldn't be without it. <laughs> Um, Michelle said, I lost over 80 pounds about 10 years ago, gained back about 40 in the last couple of years, and will worry you can't lose them again. And I think that's, yeah, the regain or not ever getting to goal, that's a really common concern that people have too. Now I'm just going to jump back over to the Instant Pot part. I went ahead and turned it off because I'm sure you could see and hear sort of as loud as it got. And that really is, if you can tolerate that, you're good. Because it doesn't make that kind of noise consistently unless you're steaming and it's constantly releasing steam. So when you're cooking with it, you should really only hear when your valve, your pressure valve, is going to come up. You might find that this little knob here, which by the way, this little knob comes off completely. Okay, so it's okay if it jiggles around a little bit because it's actually made to come off so that you can clean this in here in case you're cooking something like chili and when it goes, I always natural release things that I think are going to be kind of messy and then you don't get a whole bunch of sauce up here in the valve. But there's always going to be some movement in that valve. Just shake that water out of there so don't worry if it's if it's quite loose and it moves around a lot that's actually pretty normal okay now while we're talking about the rest of this I'm gonna go ahead and get this rice started I how many of you that have an instant pot I was surprised about this mine in the kitchen and the one that I used before this in the handle side, there's a hole, and on the lid are these little um, rectangle bits. And so when you want to put your lid to the side, you just set it like that, and it fits into, uh, you know, you could set it on either side and have it sit there. So you didn't have to think about what to do with it. This one doesn't have that. I, would, I didn't think about it when I bought it, but... It was just, I went to go do that and thought, oh, hang on. <laughs> okay. So, to do your rice, I'm going to, 
I need to empty the water that's in here out because in order for the timing to work right, you have to have room temperature or cooler water. Otherwise, it doesn't cook for the right amount of time. So what I need to do is get my little hot pot handles and I need to dump this out. And then I've got my water ready to put in there but I didn't think about that part first. So give me one second to grab my little hot pots. <clears throat> she had a lovely little accessory kit that came with it when I bought it. So it had, it came with little, uh, little silicone holders. Get those on right. My little lobster claws. So let me just go dump this in the sink, and I'll be right back. All right. Now, one thing <laughs> that I have read many, many times is people have washed their pot. They have forgotten to put it back inside the machine, and they have poured water or stock straight into that Instant Pot belly. <laughs> so... However you need to remind yourself to put that liner back in there, put that liner back in there. Um, it will absolutely, depending on how long it's in there, you can definitely mess up the electronics in there. Okay, so for pot and pot, the theory is that you're going to cook inside of any container that is safe in your oven. These are little 7-inch cake pans that I bought on Amazon I think as a six pack, but you could use any other baking pan that you had. Some people use glass. I'm a chicken when it comes to glass in general, but definitely hot glass. So I like these. And with most of the Instant Pots, you get a trivet. So a trivet is just the little stand. This one came with, I have an egg stand a little flat trivet, and then one with handles. If you have one with handles, it's great because when you go to take the pot out, you only are having to get the actual handles itself, and then you're going to lift it out like that. If you don't have the one with the little handles on it, you can just make sure that you have something safe to grab the pot with. Okay, so... Empty liner, trivet. Just gonna put that in there. Into the liner itself, you want, in an eight quart, you want two cups of water. In a six quart, you only need a cup. All right, and that is just our water that's gonna build pressure. Now, for the rice, I went ahead and rinsed, I'm gonna do a cup, and I went ahead and rinsed my rice. So you guys didn't have to wait. And if I'm not cooking something that has a specific flavor, so if this, because it's cilantro lime, I didn't want to cook it with like a really heavy chicken stock or a beef stock. Although if I was just cooking rice that didn't have a specific flavor profile, I absolutely prefer to cook with stock. And that's just a personal preference. Because this is going to be really bright with the lime juice and the cilantro, uh, you could absolutely use veggie stock or chicken stock if you wanted. I even saw a recipe, and I didn't have any, but I saw a recipe for using pineapple juice. And I think if you were going to do something where you wanted that almost mango salsa, pineapple cilantro rice, that could be really good too. Okay. So, I have my rinsed rice. Now, how do you like your rice? I prefer my rice and my pasta and my veggies almost a little on the underdone side. So, I like my rice to be not so much like chewy, but I don't want it, I don't want to squish it against the roof of my mouth and it just kind of falls apart. So the amount of liquid that you use will be determined by how you like it. Yes, Lissa has a good point there. Uh, people using bone broth to cook it in. Yeah. 
So what do you what do you think? If you want your rice to be firm, you're going to go one to one in the instant pot. It doesn't apply the same in a crock pot or on the stove, but if you want it to be slightly firm, then I use one cup of rice, one cup of liquid. If you like softer, fluffier, you want it to kind of absorb more, then go one and a quarter cup to one cup. So in my particular case, I've got one cup of water, yeah. and I'm going to put that in there. And then the, the recipes from there vary quite a bit. So a lot of people will put a little bit of lime juice in now, and then they'll finish with some lime juice after it's cooked. Most of them leave the cilantro until it's cooked. And there's some that go ahead and put seasoning in now, which I'm a seasoning now girl. So I'm going to use the... I'm going to use the Kinder's salt, pepper, and garlic blend, and you can use plain normal salt. You can put pepper in there. You can do none of the above. It's my. It's a new container. I forgot to take the lid off. All right. All right, this is going to be pretty much to taste. And again, and I've said before, because I have the whole long haul COVID taste bud dead thing, I tend to season a bit more strongly than other people would. So in most of the recipes, they call for the juice of half a lime. In my particular case, I really like the lime. So I'm going to put in about a tablespoon now, and then I'm going to add more after. So I'm going to put my lime juice in there. I have my salt, pepper, and garlic blend, and I'm going to leave the cilantro. All right. So we have, this is going to sit just directly on top of the trivet itself. I don't have a way to show you. You just have to believe me. And then... There's two ways to cook this. If you really don't like the sound that it makes when it releases, I've put, I've put together my recipe links for you guys for tonight, and Gina from Skinny Taste is one of the ones that I put in there, and she recommends that you do three minutes manual pressure, and then... A natural release which means that you're not gonna have to touch this valve you're not gonna have to listen to it go Psst. It, it basically is just gonna release the pressure itself and when your pressure valve drops down you're done so for people who don't like or are concerned about the steam that's gonna be your best option and the way that you would do that is you would turn on your manual and then you would set this time to three minutes. Okay. And then you'd let it go. And you wouldn't do anything else with it until that little valve drops down. That's it. Now the second way to do that, and some of the other recipes like the uh, two peas, I think two peas, is the, one of the other recipes, they use the rice function. So how many people have a rice function um, on their, I know I have one on here. Penny, do you have one on yours? I'm looking, but I don't see one. I have a soup of, what is that, soup, what is that, a soup? Sous vide? How do you pronounce that? S -O -U -S -V -I -D -E. Sous vide. Sous vide. Yeah, I 
V-I-D-E. Yeah, that sous vide is it's when you cook something, something in water in a bag. So it's not that. Yeah. If you don't have a rice one, then you could. Uh -uh. Okay, and you're using long grain white rice? I really just, I'm, I'm so, I, I use minute rice. I'm talking about minute <laughs> rice, like the little single serve. Okay. Just in the microwave for one minute. <laughs> Oh, oh, now if you put instant rice that's already been parboiled into the instant pot, it's going to get mushy. Yeah, I just put it in my microwave. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you're using a long grain white rice, then you could do, like I have, um, so this is from Kroger. I sometimes get them from my Asian store as well, but this is a bag of the Thai jasmine rice. If you're using brown rice, the timing is very, very different, but I don't know that anybody's using brown rice. Okay, so the if you have a rice function, which this one does, but I can't see it. Where are we at? Rice. Oh, here we go. Okay. So on this one, it says 10 minutes, and then I'm going to do a quick release. So three minutes with natural release and you don't have to deal with the steam part or on the eight quart anyway, it is 10 minutes. And when it's ready, I'm gonna switch. So I've put the valve onto sealing for this one because I want to pressure cook this. Once that's finished, I'm gonna turn that and it's gonna make the same noise that it made when it was steaming. And a lot of times they'll tell you if you're not confident in like moving that and you don't want your hand around it, use a long handled wooden spoon or a spatula, or I have these really long cooking chopsticks and you can just use that to push the valve so that you don't actually have to touch it with your hand. And uh, some people I have seen will throw a towel over it, but <laughs> you have to be careful because if you're cooking something like rice and it has a bit of starch, if you cover that valve and then you're, you're, it's not going to vent properly and you'll get all kinds of um, starch stuck inside your valve and inside the bottom of the pot. It's not going to cause anything to blow up and you can get steam diverters, which are these little caps that fit on and will like divert the steam to the side. Let's say you had this on your counter and when the steam goes up, you don't want it to go up onto the bottom of your cabinets. So you can buy diverters to change the direction. I need one of those. It makes I it a lot that. easier. Does, it, does, it does exactly what you're saying because I have it right here under my counter. I pull it out from under the counter, but it still, it still sprays. It's still sprays. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to check on one of those. Yeah, just look for, um, I think it, you'll probably be able to find it under just instant pot steam diverter i think or something similar to that will um uh, will absolutely and you'll have to match it to your model because the valves are a different shape and you need to be sure that you get one that'll fit the valve that you have but yeah they're very handy if you like you guys are in my living room <laughs> and this is set up so that i have room in here so the only thing above this is you know my ceiling fans there and then this can kind of come up i did put a towel over my laptop when i was doing the steam test because i was like oh i don't really want that getting you know condensation on there but it was okay all right now on this particular model and i believe on all of the instant pots and you guys that use them can definitely tell me if i'm wrong on this mine on here says on until it comes up to the total pressure that it's going to start cooking. Then it will click over to the time that I had it set for. And then um, when it's finished, I have to turn this one off. It automatically goes to keep warm. My one I have in the kitchen, it's, uh, it's a little bit fancy smancy and it will turn itself on, you get a percentage of how close it is to being done. It cooks, it vents itself based on whatever you tell it. So if I say quick vent on this, I need to come in and turn this to vent it. On the one I have in there, it does it itself. And then it turns the pot off 
on its own. So there's no way to overcook anything, um, which I found extremely handy. But on this one, is that the way it is for you guys too? It says on until the time, then it tells you the time, and then it goes into keep warm after that, I think. Um, that's, I think that's how mine does. When I turn it on, I choose my uh, mode of, you know, how I'm cooking, and then the time, and then um, I press start. I think it's start. Um, yeah, start, and then it, it counts down. Right. From, like, say, eight hours it goes down, and then it'll automatically go over it keeps you warm. Okay. That's what you were asking. Yeah, because I was looking for a start button. <laughs> And on this one, you don't. You you tell it, and then you wait, uh -huh. and then it goes beep, okay. and it turns itself on. So oh, I was looking okay. for a go button. Okay, so this is going to sit here, and let's let's go back to what we were talking about before. Uh, so fear that you have around sort of the weight loss thing. Now, for those of you that are worried that you're going to regain it on time, and then. Okay, thank you, Stephanie, for confirming that. Okay, so let's say, so how many of you have gotten to goal at some point in your life? Just do a little thumbs up or hands up or... Okay. And I know for a lot of people who have gotten to goal and then regained... It's very similar sometimes to people who have had weight loss surgery and regained. And, you know, it's like, oh, why do I have to do this all over again? Um, and that can be something that is huge, huge for us. So how do you try to make sure that that doesn't happen? Like, how can we take the anxiety of that as we're kind of working through the whole process and turn it into something that makes it less likely to happen again. Now, in, in a situation like Penny's where she's had multiple surgeries, and I've had abdominal surgery too. I haven't had kids, but I've had masses removed, and I've had abdominal surgery. And yeah, once they cut those muscles, there's only so much you can do, really. But, what... But what, uh, what do you think or what has been helpful to kind of alleviate some of the anxiety and help you move forward so that you're not spending the whole time that you're losing weight worried that you're going to regain it? Does anybody have anything that has worked for them that they want to share? Jackie's hands up, Lisa. Oh, Hi, Jackie. So I am really bad about noticing that. Thank you, Penny. Rock on, Jackie. They need to do like me and just jump in there. <laughs> yeah. Yes, ma'am. You go ahead, Jackie, when you're ready. that you if you decide you want to say something just jump in there I'm just reading comments okay so For me, it's kind of, I have a bit of a weird situation. When I lost, I lost over 100 pounds in 2005, 2006. I was living in New Zealand. Um, I, in 2005, turned 30. And basically, on my 30th birthday, I decided that I was going to 
attempt to lose weight for the first time in my life. And, and I was a fat kid. I was a fat teenager. I was a fat adult. So it, it, you know, that wasn't, I don't, I can't tell you why I decided to, but I did. And I joined Weight Watchers. And at the time that was their core plan. And then I was with them long enough, um, that as I continued, it went into simply filling and, and so on from there. But when I lost the weight the first time, I focused very much on the things that I could control. And what was within my control was what I ate, walking to work, how much activity I was getting in. And I, I loved my meeting leader but we never talked about what got us there in the first place. Why were we overweight? Why did we continue if people were emotional eaters or binge eaters or things like that? You know, where did this come from? And we didn't really address that. We talked about how many points were in food. And we talked about, you know, fantastic ways to support each other by putting together walking teams and things like that. But it just, I never dealt with why I was overweight in the first place. So I got to a weight that I was happy with and I was okay with and I maintained that for a very long time. And then I had to move back to the States. And when I did, I didn't realize how different food standards were in New Zealand. Like I really took for granted that I had access to fresh produce, fresh seafood. If you've never uh, seen the little map of New Zealand, it's two little islands. <laughs> and uh, I had a beach within five minutes of me anywhere I went. So I had access to amazing butcher shops. And it was really easy to get affordable and very fresh food. I had no autoimmune issues that we know of until I came back to the States. And once I had been here a couple of years, in about 2014, I think my first autoimmune issue was diagnosed. And by 2017, so I had been home seven years by then, I started putting weight back on. And it wasn't that I was necessarily eating, I wasn't eating poorly, but I was eating different because of what I could afford, what I had available to me. At that time, I wasn't driving, so it was like I could only get to where somebody could take me to to let me do grocery shopping. And we have a lot here that has preservatives and emulsifiers and things that the FDA have banned, you know, other countries have banned that the FDA allows here. And it turned out that in my case, a ton of that kicks this autoimmune stuff into high gear. And from, well, well, I put all that 100 pounds back on, plus about another 20 from where I started. And I am still working on it. And it's, it's very different here. But like, when, when we talk about the fear of regain, I 100% get it. Because I didn't gain back 10 pounds or 20 pounds or even 50 pounds. I gained back 120 pounds and to be at the foot of that mountain again and to know that no matter how hard I try, there are things that are outside of my control that I can only really do what I can do. Um, it is, there are days when it is just overwhelming and so 100% I get that part, you know, and that's, when you, when you then have to address, I'm doing everything I possibly can correctly, you know, based on what's going on and, and your doctor's recommended that you try this, 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 and your body just still fights you with it, or you haven't had a chance to, or haven't been able to address those other issues that kind of got you there, especially if it's an emotional eating side of things. I think we get ourselves into a cycle that we are bound to continue and repeat until we can kind of address that. And some stuff, 
you won't be able to. I can't change the fact that there is no cure for the autoimmune stuff I have going on. I can manage it, but that's kind of the way it is. But I can't, I can't fix it. <laughs> so once you can realize what is within your control, what can you do, and you make a plan to do what you can, and then we kind of have to move into some form of acceptance of the things that we can't change, whether from a religious and spiritual side of things, or whether just from a mental health side of things, just saying, you know what, I can't change this completely, and it's not that I'm not doing enough, it's that I just have to make a plan moving forward that allows me to do the best that I can for myself. And it, there's, there's the step between, it's like once I kind of accepted that, that I'm doing the best that I can, and I'm not just saying it, once I accepted that to be true for me, then a lot of the anxiety and a lot of the fear went away. Because my body's going to do what my body's going to do. <laughs> and I can't, I can only do so much with that. So let me just, um... oh, okay. Hi, Jackie. <laughs> yeah, so Patrice was saying, it's true about the quality of food in the U.S. versus other countries. The key word you said is affordable. You almost need a loan to purchase, purchase decent groceries. And... I mean, I know I was in New Zealand a long time ago, and I've talked to um, the friends that I still keep in touch with there, and she was showing me, you know, this farmer's market, and she was like, oh, look, I can get this for 79 cents and 99 cents and, you know, $1.29, and I'm going, okay, well, that would be $5 here, and that would be... <laughs> so, yeah, it, it very much makes a difference in what you have access to, what you have within your budget... <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. All right, what do we do it on here? Okay, so it's it's come up to temperature. Yep, and it's got two minutes on there, so that'll be finished shortly. All right, now I have another kind of... I don't know how many people will have experienced this, but we do see it fairly often. And again, it's kind of something that we haven't talked about very much. And that is how your friends, family, partners, spouses change the way they treat you as you lose weight. Whether they mean to or not, some people absolutely are you know, just going to be supportive about it. And some people are going to be nasty about it. And there's kind of no in between. And then I think, I really think there are people who don't realize what they're doing. And in, in a lot of cases, I think, especially in a situation where it's somebody that you're close to, or you live with, or you're married to, or you're in a relationship with, there is this fear that if you change physically, either you're not going to want to be with them anymore, or they aren't going to be attracted to you anymore, or they're going to have to be fighting people off with a stick because you're suddenly this much more confident, bubbly person that may not even have to do with the size change, but as you gain confidence. And I know there's a lot of people who never even considered that okay so that is my beep to tell me that we're done and in this particular case because we let it cook as long as we did I need to quick release this because I use the rice button so I'm going to turn this now it, again you can use something to poke it if you want to I'm just going to turn it and it's going to be loud for a minute and then it should be fine <laughs> And in case you worry about it, this is not hot, okay, up here. Now, if you get down here, it's definitely warmer. And you don't want your face anywhere near it, but if you're concerned that this steam up here 
is going to be super hot or your kids are going to get burned or something like that. This is not, like this here is already cool for me. Not that I'm telling you to play in your steam, but I'm just saying you don't have to worry. Um, that initial burst that comes out is quite warm. But I'm not, I used to be terrified to have my hand anywhere near this at all. I was determined that it was going to be like when you have those, um, the old pressure cookers on the stove and you had like scalding water temperature. That when I first started using it, I was like, ooh. Okay, so we're going to let this vent fully. And you should have a valve on most of the instant pots, it's the little maroon valve. And you're basically going to wait for that to completely drop down. If you're using the natural release, you don't have to do this part. And all you do is just wait for that valve to drop, which is 10, sometimes 15 minutes. It really depends on how much pressure you built up and how long it's been going on. If I've had, if I'm doing bone broth and I've had it cooking for two hours, it's obviously going to take a lot longer to come down than this, which was just quite short. Okay, so my valve has dropped. All right, I'm going to put it, I always like to put it back to sealing so I don't forget. And then. Did you check the garage door that it's locked? All right, hot lid, hot lid. Both locks? Because it's never both locks. All right, lobster claws. Okay. These are hot, 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 hot. Do not touch it. I mean, it's metal that's been in all that heat. So please do not touch that. And then you can leave the lid off now, or I'm just going to put it back on there. All right. Whoops, wrong way around. So, it depends on, so for me personally, I like my rice a little, little less cooked than this. So I would cook, in my other one, I cook white rice for eight minutes instead of 10. And that's just because I like it to be a little bit more firm, but, that's sort of where we're at. So you have, if you use more liquid, it's going to be softer. Now in this particular case, we used one cup of rice, one cup of water, and then we had the lime juice. So with that nice and hot, we're going to put the cilantro in there. And this can be as much as you like. I like cilantro, so I'm going to put about a quarter of a cup in there. I'm going to put some more lime juice in there. And this is really stirred to taste. Okay. The rice is hot enough, it's going to wilt the cilantro as it goes. And then as this cools down a little bit, it's going to finish absorbing that last little bit of liquid that's in there and you're gonna end up with a drier rice than when you very first take it out. All right, so let me see here. This is gonna be super, super hot. But let me see about seasoning wise if I need anything else in there. Sorry, I know it's gonna be super hot. I don't wanna burn my mouth. Mm. Okay, 
that's that is pretty pretty close I'm gonna put just a little little I know it looks like I'm shaking a lot but not a lot's coming out okay just a little bit more yeah that's still a little still a little hot to hold with my hand all right and that is it so I'm gonna let this sit and cool down slightly and then in the um, in the information that I put together for you I put a bunch of links of where to use this so uh, you could I linked to Downshiftology has some really good recipes uh, she has a recipe for the cilantro lime rice and then she's like you know what would you use it in and I linked to a carnitas recipe of hers which I'm gonna try and some carne asada no asada carne asada with an A at the end which is a steak dish carnitas is a pork dish you could use it anywhere you're doing Mexican like chicken fajitas and then she has an orange glazed salmon recipe which I thought would be really nice and then there was like a cilantro lime chicken bowl and a shrimp bowl and so I've linked all those and I'll post those so you have some ideas of what to do with it afterwards but the the pot and pot I use for all of my grains so rice couscous farro bulgur polenta really anything that there's a chance that it was going to stick to the bottom of the pot or if i need to cook a small amount of something if, yeah if, if i put if i cook inside my instant pot with another pot like you're talking about do i have to put liquid in the bottom of it or do i just stick what have to put liquid Okay, yeah, so I wouldn't just sit my pot over in there. I need a, a, a certain amount, or I can't remember if you said. Right. So, did you work out if yours is an eight quart or a six quart? It's an eight quart. It's definitely eight quart. Okay. So, if you're going to do pot and pot, quart. then you have to have two cups of water in the bottom. Okay. So, if I cook, if I cook the pot in my pot, at least two cups of water. Correct. Yeah, because you're not cooking anything in the liquid that's in the bottom of the pot, but that is just the minimum that an eight quart takes to come to pressure. So you okay, have to yeah, put two cups of water in the in the bottom of the pot. In a six quart, okay. um, for those of you that have six quarts, you only need one cup of water to do pot in pot. But I have a really good link in the in in all the links and stuff that will give you all the directions and he, he the person who wrote the article did a great job of showing you all the different types of um, bowls and things that you can use for the pot in pot mm -hmm. and so you don't have to guess so that's I do that in my air fryer as well I have a big air fryer um, I don't know if you can see it it's a it's a pretty big can you see it yeah okay uh, can I could I sit something down in there? Cause I gotta wash that. I put potatoes in it. Um, I wonder if I could do something like that in there. You can. Anything that is safe in your oven is safe oven. in your air fryer. So if it fits okay. Okay. and it's safe in your oven, you can definitely use it in the air fryer. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Glad I, I'm glad I remember that because I almost forgot to wash it. <laughs> Carol said, so I'm just going back over comments. Carol said, you make the quick release motion look so easy and carefree. I grab a stick and make sure everybody evacuates the house. I know. And that's like, I, I don't have a big wooden spoon. And you could, when I started, I was like, let me get over here and, and you know, push this. But once I sort of got used to it and I knew what to expect, I felt better about doing it. All right, hang on here. Yes, Jackie, absolutely. Jackie's gonna recommend an instant pot site. Oh, 
traditional Western life. This is a Marxist ethic, one of many that's happening in this country, all at the same time. You can feel that onslaught coming in from almost everywhere. I don't think that's it. <laughs> I can't see here. Hang on. Deanna, can you please mute? Here is how Kathleen There you go. Okay, yes, grab a stick. Yes. I have to say, this Instafox is a little warm with my shoulder up against it now. Okay. Well, so that's that's kind of that's what I wanted to show you about this part. I will give you tons of information in the post. Um, I've put it together. I just haven't posted it yet, so I'll post that tonight. And but the uh, if you have really if you have anything that you are concerned about, either instant pot or weight loss, you're welcome to message me. But it's, I just think it's one of those things where I really want to sort of challenge you to acknowledge those things that you might be concerned about or insecure with doing or just flat out afraid to do. And if you get to the point where you're like, you know what, this year I'm going to take the bull by the horns and I'm going to address this and just kind of meet it head on. And I'm not saying that if you're afraid of spiders that you need to let some giant tarantula go crawling all over you. That's, you know, there are baby steps in between. But in, in something like this, then even if you just run the water test from the other side of the room, you know, if you, if you can get yourself just one step past where you are, that's a start. And that will give you the confidence to then take the next step and do something and then take the next step. So absolutely, if you can work out what it is that is holding you back and we can work on steps to make a plan to address those things, I think you'll find that your year will be, and, and your whole weight loss journey and cooking journey <laughs> will be very different when you can move past the anxiety. And I say this as somebody who has like proper panic attack anxiety. I get that it's easier said than done. All right. Okay, so Jackie said, okay, let me go back up. Patrice, that was, yes, was white long grain rice. In my particular case, it is um, a jasmine, but the timings that we talked about apply to any long grain white rice. If you're using a long grain brown, a wild, or black rice, it's a whole other ballgame. Different timing completely. Jackie said, Rooty Toot. So R-O-O-T-I-T-O-O-T. Rooty Toot Instant Pot Recipes and Help is the Facebook page. She said that's an amazing site. So look that up on Facebook. And thank you, Stephanie. She said that's been great. And... Yeah, there's all kinds of little little tricks and tips. Um, I think, so Friday, Foodie Friday, I am going to try the first of my around the world recipes of things that I have never cooked. Um, some of them I've had, some of them I haven't, but I'm gonna start with a beef birria in the crock pot. And we decided to do Foodie Fridays in two meetings. So there'll be a morning meeting and then an evening meeting. And basically, it works out well for crockpot meals because I'll start it in the morning. And then whoever comes to the evening will see the finished product. So that is the plan. And then if I don't see you then, I will be back again next Tuesday with another kitchen adventure series. And we will go from there. All right. Did you guys have any questions? I don't want to keep you too long because Jordan's going to be on in half an hour. Now I got to make crap one of those things. <laughs> okay. we got now I to, there are so many people who are worried about them. Check your thrift stores first 
because I'm seeing people who are able to find a brand new one, sometimes still in the box, everything's still in the plastic for like 25 bucks. Oh, wow. Um, this one I bought from a lady out of the yard sale group, and the same thing. She got given it. Her brother gave it to her, and she was like, mm -mm, I don't even want to, I don't want to know about it. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to do it. And so everything in here was still wrapped in plastic and everything. And, uh, you know, so check your thrift stores, your Goodwill centers, your things like that first. Then check Facebook Marketplace. And then if you can't find that, normally places like Kohl's or Target or Bed Bath & Beyond or Ollie's, they'll really often have them on sale as well. So you shouldn't, it shouldn't be terribly expensive. I think you can probably find one uh, at a relatively good price. They remind me of a pressure cooker. It is. So it is an electronic pressure cooker. The only difference is instead of sitting it on the stove on an eye with heat underneath it, you plug it in. But that's it. And All right. Mine, like I said, it has an air fryer built in, the pressure cooker. You can slow cook, steam. Yeah. Roast, bake, it has all broil, air fry, it has all kind of is, is yours, honey, is yours the Instapot? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's the Instapot, and, um, can you see that? Yeah. And it has the, I don't know if you can see the, the yep. top there, yep. you'll see, and it has the little, um, big insert. Oh, wow. Okay. And it came, it came with, um. It came, of course, with that thing Lisa was talking about. And for my, now I have to change the lid. This is the lid I have to use for the uh, air fryer. To the air fryer, okay. yeah. It just changes okay. the lid. And okay. then it came with these two little, um, these two little, the little steamer and the little mm -hmm. basket to air fry mm -hmm. stuff in. Yeah. So I, I really like it. Does it tell you on the front of it, Penny, what model it is? Like this one says over here on the side, I think. Does it tell you? It's a Duo Crisp Instapot Duo Crisp Air, uh, air Fryer. Okay, so it's the Duo Crisp is the model on that. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Duo, yeah the Duo Crisp air Plus Air Fryer, and it's the Instapot. Uh, in fact, I ordered it from the Instapot website. Yeah. Uh -huh. My Walmart, it was back during the COVID, you know, they were out and everything, so I ordered it online. So, but, yeah. Yeah, you can I definitely... I have a brand new one in the box still. I haven't opened it yet. Because I'm nervous. <laughs> well, did this help? Did, did it help to actually be able to, like, see and hear it so that you know what it's going to do? And I'm still standing, you know, this close to it. So if I had any concern... And this is a new one to me, so I will say, like I said, the first time I ran it, I was like, you're being a bit loud here, but uh, it, it's just a difference. Mine in the kitchen isn't this loud, but I think... My niece has one. She cooks just about everything, Amy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, this, I... If it's something and that I can... definitely use the slow cooker bags. When I use the slow cooker, you know, the, the pot, pot um, uh, part... I definitely use the slow cooker bag. Definitely. I use those at the big difference. cooker in the crock pot. Yeah. I use them too. It's easy for cleanup. Very, very much, much easier that way. Okay. I'm going to go, guys, because it is a little okay. bit past. Thank you, thank you. I thank will you. see you next week. Thank you for taking time with us. No yeah. problem. No problem. All right. I'll see. You. I'll, I'll post all those links and I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, see you Friday. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye.